As a business owner of a small European Express courier company, uh, will the Express transport industry survive outside the customs union and single market when we become a third country? Um, it would be very surprising if it didn't, that there are express deliveries between Switzerland and the European Union, and Switzerland remains uh, a, a third country. Um, that I think there are a lot of scare stories around how business will operate, but you can get express deliveries from the UK to the United States that it is perfectly possible to implement and work through customs procedures in a highly efficient and streamlined way. But there will be some changes, because we will not be in the customs union and we will not be in the single market. Response from you. Kieran? Right. Um, if I can give you some hands-on experience of uh, where I've been. I've, I've been to every border and country in Europe. Um, I've, I've done a job to Switzerland before. I've, imp I've exported uh, £100,000 worth of exhibition equipment for a medical company from Cambridge. Um, I got sent down what was called a Route 1 at Customs House in Dover. I was there for seven hours. I then got to the Swiss border. I was there for five hours, and I missed the first day of the exhibition. Mm. They had to pay a 20% down payment on their temporary imports for their machines that they wanted to exhibit. They missed the first day. It cost them about £10,000, and they were deeply, deeply unhappy. This is not a frictionless border. The Swiss border is not frictionless. You have to stop. You have to go out of your van or your vehicle in your truck. You have to go up four, up four flights of stairs to find your customs agent. You have to get your T1 or T2 forms processed or your carnet, depending on what you're doing. Then you have to get them stamped by the French, the Swiss, then you can come in. The same applies to Customs House in Dover. There's no infrastructure there. There's no parking. At the moment, you can go there at the right time. You might be in and out in 30, 40 minutes. But when, when, when everybody has to clear their customs papers, it will be an absolute nightmare. Um, I just want to know how you can respond to that. Jacob Rees-Mogg. Well, well it, it's a question of having the right infrastructure in place and the systems that deal with this. Um, that if you look at the imports and exports of our Southampton to the rest of the world, these are hugely efficient and streamlined because that's what they're focused on. But the, the issue with Dover is it's not primarily focused on non-EU um, movements at the moment. Once we're outside the EU, Dover will have to become a streamlined uh, port, otherwise they'll find that they lose business to other ports. Won't we suffer the problems we have in, that that gentleman suffered in Switzerland? Why, why, why would but Switzerland have been at it for years, and they clearly haven't done very well with it. At least this is what I take from well, what Kieran's telling us. Um, uh, Kieran is telling us about an incident where he had a particularly difficult time yeah. uh, getting through Switzerland. No, no, no I, I, I appreciate yeah. that. I wasn't trying to, to minimise it. Uh, but the Swiss EU border is most of the time a very efficient border with very limited delays, uh, as is the um, uh, Norway Sweden um, border. Uh, Norway, Norway being. The border is much smaller than the UK border. You can go by Gothenburg into Norway and clear customs there at a physical hard border checkpoint. You can go from Hertzschulz to Larvik and clear at the port in Larvik. It's tiny. There are. Think there are. There are there are checks, indeed, between Norway and uh, Sweden, um, because Norway is in the single market but not in the customs union. Uh, but the border is an, efi is an efficient border that, that you can have, and there are many efficient borders globally, and that is what we should be trying to do. That's what government policy is, to have as seamless as possible. But there will be some, there will be some changes, of course. Um, I'll let you make your final point, Kieran, because there are. So this will be your final observation, but make a final point to Jacob rees -Mogg. Kieran? There's not one single white paper that the government has yet produced on road transport apart from permits for trailers, including caravans and private trailers over 750 kilos. Everybody would be affected. Driving licenses would be affected. And well, they're also saying, according to the European Union white paper, it says you'll need a transport manager that must be a resident in an EU country and you must have a premises. Mm -hmm. This is going to put small to medium-sized businesses out of business overnight. We won't be able to compete, and all you're going to have is the large companies running it. The I'll tell you something. One last thing from me. I transport exhibitions. I transport car parts for the just-in-time production line. I transport AOG airport on ground parts. I do band work for concerts. They cannot go by truck. They must go by van. They rely on the f smooth and frictionless transport over right. borders from Dover to Calais, got... where you do not stop to clear customs. All right. nowhere to stop, and it will it'd be an absolute disaster when it does. All right, I have to finish there. Final uh, rejoinder from you. Uh, well, there will, there will be a white paper. There is a bill on um, transport going through the House of Commons uh, at the moment. 
Uh, and the issue with driving license is one at the forefront of the Department of Transport's mind already, and they have a solution in sight. So I, I think the fears are being overstated.